Anybody probably already knows the basic things that you need in order to get started sewing, but I'm going to run through a quick list of stuff that you want to gather together if you haven't done so already and have ready to pull out whenever we start doing things like stitch alongs and projects or I'm showing you something and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, I also want to relieve anybody who doesn't have a sewing machine and thinks that they need a sewing machine to get started sewing. You can get started sewing using a needle and thread. It's the way people sewed for a very long time. And if you've read the first post in my blog, I've said that I actually am enjoying going back to hand sewing a lot just because it's portable, it's soothing, it's very accurate, and yes, it's slow, but it still works just fine. And you get such a great sense of accomplishment after you have hand pieced something together. You don't have to start making dresses right away or any kind of garments. Uh, you don't even have to start by making anything really huge. If you want to test out whether sewing is something that you even really enjoy doing, this is a good way to get started. So, if you don't already have these things around your house, then either go raid someone's old sewing basket that's sitting in your parents' garage, or go to the thrift store, or go to Target, which has a sewing section, Walmart has a sewing section. If you're lucky enough to live near a fabric store, obviously go there. Joanne Fabrics is right now probably one of our only national chains. It's the only one that we still have in Pittsburgh. If you're lucky enough to still live near a Hancock Fabrics, which I prefer, then that's a good place to start. Um, you could order these things online. I have also seen most of these things available at the Dollar Tree. Uh, so that's another good place to get started on gathering up your supplies. Obviously, the, the thing that you're going to need is a needle. <laughs> Speaking of raiding someone's sewing basket, I have inherited, I think, all of my sewing needles from random sewing baskets belonging to random grandparents or great aunts who have stopped sewing because they have arthritis or they've died or what have you. So I don't know what packages of needles look like these days. This is a multi-pack and I'm really sorry that my webcam does this. It's got uh, sharps, darners, and embroidery needles. You really want sharp needles for our hand sewing. We're not doing any embroidery or darning or anything like that. And a sharps needle basically means that it's metal and it has a point that is going to be able to go through fabric as quickly and efficiently as possible, but not separating the fibers so much that it's going to leave a hole. Yes, you use different size needles based on what kind of fabric you're working with. For getting started, it actually probably would be easier to start with a needle that is longer and thicker. If you are someone who gets easily frustrated with threading the needle, which is passing the actual thread through the eye of the needle, then start with needles that have really big eyes where that's going to be really easy for you to do. Um, your needle actually, you don't want it to bend very much. In fact, the sign of a good needle is one that's just going to snap really quickly and cleanly. So if your needle is bending all around, that's not the kind of needle that we want. Sometimes you want a flexible needle, but for getting started, you want a needle that is sharp and that's going to be easy for you to thread. As you get more experienced, you will probably learn to appreciate smaller, finer needles. And those needles, when I say smaller and finer needles, they're going to be thinner in diameter the whole way around. The eye is probably going to be really little, and when the eye is smaller, it gives you more control over where your thread is going and what it's doing. 
it's also going to hang on to finer threads better and put less stress on those fibers. And you also want something with a nice fine sharp point that's going to pierce the fabric and again it's nice and skinny so it's not going to go through and spreading your fibers. You um, will learn that it's much easier to control a smaller needle than it is to control a really big long one. And here are those two needles that I just showed you side by side to give you an idea of how these needles really do come in different lengths. Um, let's see this one. This one's even smaller. This is my favorite needle right now. Is it in my fingers like that? And yes, get used to poking yourself with needles. It is going to happen. This is my pincushion. It took me 15 years of sewing a lot to finally make myself a pincushion that I could wear on my wrist. I fastened it with a snap. This is just a piece of denim bias tape that I had left over from something else made into a wristband and this is one piece of no yeah one piece of quilting cotton folded in half sewn around three edges I will show you how to do this later I decided to tuft it with a button the same time that I sewed it to the wristband it just makes it cuter and it also just adds that reinforcement as far as having it stuck to the wristband and you don't want to stuff your pin cushions with polyester fiber fill that like white fluff that you find I probably have pieces of it laying all over the place pin cushions need to be stuffed with something really sturdy something that has a lot of substance to it so an old rag or scraps of fabric is what I have in here this right here this I actually knitted and felted, which if you don't know what that means, then you can email me. I basically made a cover for my great aunt's old pincushion, and she was born in 1900, so what's in this pincushion is probably at least 100 years old, and I'm pretty sure that it's stuffed with rags and sawdust, and that's going to keep your pins and your needles finally honed. By the way, yes, you want to get pins. And if you can find them, which you should be able to find these at a Joanne Fabrics, but you won't be able to find them at a Dollar Tree or a Walmart, I highly suggest that you get pins that have glass heads, and they will specifically say whether they have glass heads. These have plastic heads. They're quilting pins. They're longer. They're easier to see. These are nice and grippy. Why glass heads? For one thing, the, the ball of the pin seems to not come off as easily. Sometimes you'll be grabbing one of these to pull it out of whatever you're working on, and the head of the pin will just come off, making it useless. The other advantage to having glass heads on your pins is that you can press them without melting the pins, because glass, of course, isn't going to melt under the heat of an iron. Um, that's why people used to use just these metal headed pins, which these are fine, but obviously that pin head is not as easy to see or as attractive <laughs> as this glass head is right here. These I think come in some different colors, but white I found is pretty sufficient. It shows up easily on white and um, shows up on dark colors too. The last basic tool that you need, scissors. Everybody probably has a pair of scissors around the house. Um, you can sew without scissors if you um, can just get along breaking your thread with your hands or with a pocket knife or a dinner knife if you, for whatever reason, don't have a pair of scissors around. At the moment, don't worry about going out and investing in some really expensive pair of scissors. This is a wonderful thing to have eventually, especially if you start working with fine, thin fabrics where you really need a lot of control and a very sharp blade to be able to cut cleanly. These are Ginger. These can be found online. You can get them at the fabric store. If you sign up for the Joann's mailing list, you get 
a 40 or 50% off coupon pretty much every month in the mail. And if they're not...